This is Blazers All Access, an inside look at UAB basketball with head coach Andy Kennedy. Blazers All Access is presented by Viva Health, part of the UAB Health System, and by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Here's the voice of the Blazers, David Crane. UAB split two at Charlotte and now welcomes Rice to Birmingham this weekend. We welcome you to Blazes All Access with head coach Andy Kennedy. I'm David Crane. Coach, there are good starts. And then there was Friday night or Friday afternoon in Charlotte. You held the 49ers without a field goal until there were less than seven minutes to play in the first half, and you built a 24-1 to lead. That's, that's hard to top, isn't it? Well, it is hard to top. Unfortunately, we couldn't top it the next game, but <laughs> a great start. I, I thought our guys were really locked in. Charlotte's got a good basketball team, and they're a team that offensively produce a lot of different problems for you. We had all week to prepare. Uh, our guys were really locked in to scout and report defense, did a good job of not allowing them to catch any offensive rhythm early. You get off to that 24 to one start, you wish you could end it right then. <laughs> hey, enough, a, a 10 point rule, can we move on? Like Little League, uh, had to finish the game, really proud of our effort in night one. Defense really good all night long, and the offense in building that big lead hit a lot of shots for you there in the first half. Yeah, you know, when we established inside out, we, we're trying to make a concerted effort to go through Trey early. They were doubling him. Big to big, he was finding the open guy. We knocked down some open shots. We made about 55% of our clean looks, which is an area that we've struggled in. Uh, so when we're making shots and we're guarding at that level, uh, Blazers are pretty good. UAB led 37 to 11 at halftime and cruised to the 61-37 win on Friday at Halton Arena. Trey trying to back it out, lobs it in the lane, caught by Levin, he'll lay it up and in for two more. Well, nice recognition there by Trey Jemison. Hurdle with it up the right side into the front court, little stutter step move, he'll pull up from three and hit it. Wow, big time play. Hurdle's got it, foul line left, turn around jumper up and in. Five for Mike Ertle. Young with it, top of the wheel. Bullet pass in the lane, stolen by Levin. He'll lob it ahead to Tyreek Scott Grayson for the two-hand slam. Jalen penetrates, underhand scoop to Ronji Gordon, who lays it up and in. Rosetto, bullet pass underneath to Kirkland for the lay-in. Wide open basket in the, wow, that's a wide open bucket. Great find, Trey Jemison in the lane, the two-hand slam, left. Stop, feed it underneath to Jemison, another wide open slam. The highlights are brought to you by Viva Health. You weren't thinking about a Medicare plan back then, but at Viva Medicare, it's been on our mind for a long time. And we know a thing or two about making Medicare easy. That's why our plans have $0 co-pays for primary care physician visits. So when the time comes to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan that focuses on the things you're passionate about, we'll be here for you. Viva Medicare. Enjoy life without the worry. Learn more at vivahealth.com slash Medicare. Legacy is what you do every day. We try not only to help people with their financial legacies, we hope that we enrich their lives and help them become better people so that that total package at the end of the day is something they can be proud of. We help them craft their legacy. Coach, games like Friday can be tough for both teams, but for different reasons. And I know you knew you would see a different Charlotte team on Saturday, didn't you? Well, we saw exactly what we anticipated, a team that were played with desperation. Uh, again, they had dropped the game prior to us coming in to a local Division II team that they picked up based on COVID, uh, Belmont Abbey. So we caught them a little bit on their heels. We knew they would be super focused in game two. They're best players. They've got two guys that were preseason first team all league, uh, including the reigning conference USA freshman of the year and Jameer Young, and he struggled in game one. We knew he was not going to do that in game two. They came out and, and really, really played well offensively in the first half. They made five three-pointers with less than three seconds left on the shot clock. Mm -hmm. Our inability to finish defensive possessions put us behind the eight ball. Now, to my guy's credit, down 13 with about eight to play, it would be easy, second day of a tough turn. Physically, both times we've done this, I can tell there's a different energy level for us. Maybe because we don't go as deep as we need to. Uh, the loss of Quan, 30 quality minutes. Some of those things maybe, maybe uh, add up on, on game two, but we were right there. They make the five threes. We push back from down 13 to cut it to a one-point game. Actually took the lead before the first media in the second, and we're right in games. Uh, Two-point possession with about 10 minutes to play. 
inability to finish some things offensively, some untimely turnovers, and give Charlotte credit. 10 for 19 from the three. Typically, it's going to be a long night when that happens. You were reading my mind or reading my notes. You only had eight turnovers in the game. It wasn't your notes. I don't have my readers on. (laughs) Only Uh eight turnovers in that game, but a couple of them came at a really bad time, didn't they? We had a couple of just huge swings. You hear it's it's coach speak, but you're talking four or five-point swings where you have opportunities on one end, you don't cash in. They turn around and and knock down big shots on the other. They hurt us on the glass. We go one for 15, season low uh, as it relates to shooting the three, as well as we shot it the first night in clean looks. Uh, it was our worst shooting performance of the season, and those things add up. Blazers did have a one-point lead early in the second half, but the cold shooting just a little too much to overcome. Here's some of the highlights from Saturday's Game 2 from Charlotte. Trey backing down into the paint, pivots, throws it up with a right-hand hook, shot good. Spin, space, line, pretty up and under move, and he'll kiss it off the glass. Driving, flipping in the paint to Jemison for the two-hand slam. And what a pass. Back to Benjamin, left corner, pops a quick three, and hits it. Right off the high screen by Jemison. Bullet pass into Trey, who lays it up and gets it to go. Now starts the dribble drive down the lane, drops it off to Nicholson, who drops it in for two more. But playing a lot of zone in this game. Nicholson, top of the key. Let's fly with a three and hits. Down six. Lovin's got it. Free throw line spinning in the paint. Scoops it up and in. Mike spinning free throw line down the right of the lane. Stops, takes the eight footer and hits to Williams. He'll pivot and get his pocket pick by Taven Lovin. Going the other way. Behind the D, he'll lay it up and in. Great play. Here come the Blazers. Benjamin pushing top of the key. Accelerates down the lane. He'll throw it up with the right hand off the glass and good. The highlights are brought to you by Mountain Dew. Legacy is what you do every day. We try not only to help people with their financial legacies, we hope that we enrich their lives and help them become better people so that that total package, at the end of the day, is something they can be proud of. We help them craft their legacy. This segment of Blazers All Access is sponsored by Regions Bank. Blazers now 10-2 overall, 3-1 in Conference USA, still tied for first in the West Division. Time now to check the Children's of Alabama stats for the two-game series in Charlotte. Blazers wind up shooting 43% overall, 22% from three, 73% from the line. Charlotte, after that tough Friday, winds up shooting 45% overall, 38% from three and 77% from the line. Rebounding numbers, each team won the battle once. The rebounds dead even at 58 apiece. Blazers had 21 turnovers to Charlotte's 34. The assists were also dead even at 26 apiece. And UAB for the series, 17 steals to Charlotte's seven. Coach, you had Mike Ertle and Taven Lovin both averaging double digits in the two-game series. Mike with 11 per game, Taven at 10 per game. Jalen Benjamin, eight and a half per game. You you didn't have that consistent third or fourth guy giving you the the double-digit performance, did you? Yeah, they go 10 for 19 from three. We go one for 15. Typically, no other stat is even going to be relevant, (laughs) despite the fact that for us, uh, we gave up 56% field goal shooting for Charlotte in game two. We came into this thing in top 10 in the country in field goal efficiency defense. It did not travel in game two. Again, give Charlotte credit, made timely plays, got us on our heels, and were able to get the split at home. Our guys had a lot of fight. We've got to get better offensively. Since Quan's been down, we have struggled to score because we're not getting a lot of things in the open floor. We're only averaging around the mid-60s without his presence, and he's not going to be with us again this upcoming weekend. So we have got to figure out a way to be more efficient on the offensive end to give ourselves a chance moving forward. One guy that helps you in that department on Friday, our difference maker of the weekend, Kasim Nicholson. He averaged eight and a half points and nine rebounds. He had a tremendous first half for you on Friday and wound up playing with stitches on Saturday for you. Yeah, you know, he was tremendous early. We've always said, you know, Trey Jemison is such a presence. We talk about it after every game. Sometimes his stat line doesn't jump out as being a huge difference maker, but his presence inside, he occupies so much space, it allows Kasim to cherry pick, so to speak, a lot of rebounds. He had 14 in game one, 12 in the first half. 
took the stitches. I thought I would joke after the game. I thought he's having open heart surgery. It took him so long. We were using the Charlotte doctor. I think he was I think he was taking his time, or maybe maybe he had an intern doing him. I don't know. But uh, it took forever for him to get back. He he didn't quite regain his rhythm, but he was without question our MVP in game one. In game two, I thought he had some some real opportunities when we made that push back from being down 13 in the first half to cut it to a one point game. He was huge in that finishing inside. We have some breakdowns. Uh, our inability to finish defensive possessions has cost us two games. We've got to clean that up moving into this upcoming series. This segment of Blazers All Access is sponsored by Regions Bank. Home. Home is where your story starts, where your history is, where you leave your mark because it leaves its mark on you. You protect it because if you don't have pride in your home, what you even got? So lace up, stand up, cheer from the stands, cheer from the streets, cheer with your sisters and your brothers. Wear it, wave it, join the band, because this is your home's team. Home goes with you wherever you are. And here, we go together. This segment of Blazers All Access is sponsored by Legacy Credit Union. Time to preview this weekend's opponent, the Rice Owls coming to Birmingham. They're at 10 and four overall, four and two in Conference USA after they split two with Old Dominion last weekend in Houston, and they are one of the better offensive teams in the league, aren't they? Very, very explosive. They have, they have a dynamic backcourt that can score in bunches. Both kids average over 40% from three, and they both make around three and a half a game. So they score in bunches. Uh, very, very potent offensively. We've got to do a great job of trying to eliminate easy looks for them. They want to play fast. Tempo shouldn't be an issue. Again, our offense has to catch up with our defense, and I think that's especially important leading into this series with Rice. Bunch of good shooters. You mentioned Quincy Oliveri and Travis Evie, both in the top ten in scoring and are the top two three-point shooters in Conference USA. Max Fielder leads everybody in shooting at almost 69%. And the three-point line is, is key in league play. Almost 50% uh, 50 of their shots have come from behind the arc. Yeah, they're committed to that style of play. There's no question about that. And defensively, we're one of the best in the country at guarding the three. So something will have to give on Friday and Saturday in Bartow Arena. Friday night, a 6.30 tip here in Birmingham. And then on Saturday, we'll start at 4 o'clock. Good luck against the Owls. Thank you. For head coach Andy Kennedy, I'm David Crane. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time on Blazers All Access. Blazers All Access has been presented by Mountain Dew, Do the Dew, and by Viva Health, part of the UAB Health System. This has been a presentation of the Blazers Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.